So how do you create a faceted ring like this in Fusion 360? Obviously, there's several ways to do that. One is just regular solid modeling. Uh, as those two entries show here, I tried my luck here with T-splines because I find it just more interesting. So let me show you how I do this with T-splines. So I'm going to go into the form environment and create a cylinder. And uh, let's say that it's 23 millimeters in diameter. And we make that maybe 4 millimeters tall. So in order to have enough facet or geometry for facets, I actually need to make many more segments. So let's say 56. And Fusion complains. And oddly enough, it doesn't make the facets. It tells me I can proceed, I can click OK, but I cannot preview it. So I'm going to, I'm just going to enter a number here and then uh, undo that number. And then it shows me the number of facets. Cool. So, and also something else I'm going to do because it's not symmetric to the origin, but I know it's two millimeters tall, uh, four millimeters tall. So I'm just going to move this down by two millimeters. And that's two. So now I am symmetric. So I'm going to align my view here sort of with the, uh, with the Z axis, uh, sorry, with the X axis. And now I'm going to just simply add edges. I actually, unintuitively, that function is called insert point. But to be honest, I can't come up with a better name for that myself. So Alt-1 to go back into box view mode. And I'm going to just simply insert more points. Start with the outlines of my facets. So I have my base facets, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete the other stuff because I don't need it. We are going to use our circular duplicate symmetry tool here. And um, no, that's not exactly right. I need to delete it. A, I need to delete those down there. And I need to delete these here. So when I pattern this, it fits together. Not well, pattern. When I work with a circular sim duplicate, it's sort of like a pattern tool, a circular pattern tool. So when I do this, all that meshes nicely together like a puzzle. Oh, let me see, let's see how many we need. All right, 28. Half of 56 makes sense, right? Okay, so now I've got my facets here, but of course I don't need all those. So I'm going to delete and those edges and also oops those edges here and those okay so now we have facets but the facets aren't flat so unfortunately, I cannot snap to other vertices, like for example, I could do in Blender, but that's okay. We can, uh, we can eyeball it, that's good enough. I'm not looking to create a precise engineering model. But this is more decorative object, so to speak. So now the top facet is flat, but therefore, oops, come on. Therefore, this facet here 
it's not flat, so I need to take this point here and move this down. that there and I need to do the same thing here. Alright, so now our facets are flat. Cool, that could almost be it, um, but I'm not quite done yet because I also want these nice, nicely rounded over. and. Uh, if I would want to use this as a cutting tool, for example, in the solid environment, I would have to crease all these edges and then fillet that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just simply going to add some more um, edges. So double click on this here and give that 0.1 and double click that again, give that 0.11 actually a minus because I need for this to be on the other side and then I do the same thing here and do the same over here okay so now I've got a few Odd vertices, but well, this is a quad, um, but let me see how that looks like. So that gives me a strange sort of pinching effect here that I don't like. So I'm going to ba go back in here and it takes a moment. And I'm going to insert another point in here, here, and here. And same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to delete those. So with the exception of those phases here, I now have nice clean quads. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this, edit form, and where's my uh, gizmo, there it is, and I point this out by minus 0.1, oops, I need to hold the alt key down to extrude new geometry, and, oh, 0.1, well that's convenient. And then I do the same thing over here. Edit form and uh, if I could just hold down that alt key, that'd be great. Okay, minus point, minus point one. Okay, and then I'm going to take that and that just scale that in just a hair. Let's say 0.95. Ooh, well that was a bit much. 9.8, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9. Yes, that looks better. Okay, if I finish that form now and I get quickly go into the render environment just to see how that looks like. Yeah, oops, yeah. That looks better to me. So now what we can do, we go back into the design environment and because it should be symmetric toward the, the center point, I'm just going to make a ring here. I 
And yeah, I know I should uh, probably dimension this. Um, I don't know, 22. No, 20. Yeah, that looks okay to me. Make that 25. And extrude this to symmetric to no, 0 0.05 or let's say 4.1 so that still peaks out there all right, so now we can just go ahead and split that body with that surface. Click OK. And there's my ring. And now I can just go ahead and put some ordinary fillets on it. Hopefully. And make that one, two, five, maybe. Hmm, that's pretty big. That's actually a little bit too big. So make that point one five, maybe. Yeah. That uh, that looks more reasonable. Maybe 0.125. Okay. And then uh, make another fillet inside here. And that can be a bit bigger. And uh, because it's a bit bigger, we give that just a nice V2 fillet. And make that. Uh, it's about as big as it can get. Maybe give that a different tangency rate and say OK. So, and then we can just go ahead and apply material and we pick the gold and maybe um, we go into the render environment. And that looks kind of boring. We don't have much to reflect in that ring. So I'm going to go to the setup and set this to, uh, to, to a dark environment. And say, OK, then we go into environment library and I load another HDRI that I have somewhere, somewhere. Mm. somewhere in here and it takes a moment and there we go that already looks better but if I click on render now how about that that ain't too shabby so that's how you create that sort of a ring using T splines very different from modeling with the solid modeling environment, but in this case, it's actually sort of a hybrid that works pretty well.